Hey there, it's Cami again from the blog Tidbits at tidbits-cami.com. Now we had the most enjoyable winter evening dipping candles and making our own homemade beeswax candles from our very own bees. Now we are going for like a old fashioned little women inspired Christmas theme this year. And this activity just seemed about perfect to give us those old fashioned vibes all winter long. So I think you'll really enjoy trying the simple DIY out yourself. So let me show you the process and give you some tips that we learned along the way. So let's go over the supplies you're gonna need for your own dipped beeswax candles. So you're gonna need some string for your wick or maybe like a wax wick long enough for the candle that you wanna make. You also need some weight to pull down your string when dipping. So we used a bolt nut and tied it to the bottom of every string. To melt your wax, you're gonna need a pan or a pot you don't really care about since it will be ruined with the wax when you warm it up. So we went to the thrift store and bought a pot for just a couple of dollars. Now you'll need two glass or metal jars that are about the same height. One is gonna be for the wax and one will be for your cold water. And of course you need beeswax or whatever candle wax you wish to have for your candles. I really love the very natural and perfect look of the beeswax and the natural honey smell is just absolutely divine. So you'll also want to keep some scissors handy while you're making your candles. Okay, how to make your dipped beeswax candles. So the process for making tapered candles is actually very simple and a lot of fun. So step one, melt your beeswax slowly. You definitely don't want it boiling or splattering. Step two, prepare your area by covering it with some wax paper or plastic. Step three, tie the nuts onto the end of your string. Now if your container is wide enough and if you have plenty of wax, you can double up so that your, sh um, your string, so that you're dipping two at the same time on like a loop string. You just wanna make sure that they don't touch as you dip the candles in and out. Step four, pour the hot melted wax into your jar. Be very careful, it will not feel good if you get that on your hands. And prepare your cold water in another jar and have them sitting right next to each other. So step five, just start dipping your string nut side down into the wax. You lift it back up again almost instantly and in smooth, even movements. Then you dip it right away into the cold water and then you just repeat this process until your candle is as thick as you want it to be. So step six, after you're done dipping, just carefully snip the bolt nut off and kind of mold the base of the candle with your hands. It should still be pretty warm and pliable. Step seven, trim the string or wick about a half inch past the wax tip. Step eight, this is if you want a beautiful vintage looking candle, you can use a lighter to melt the tip of the candle and let the wax just drip and build up on the candlestick. This was by far my favorite step and it gave the candles so much old world character. Now it may seem like you will have to dip a long time to build it up, but you'll be surprised at how fast it goes before it's wide enough um, at the base of the taper to fit into a candlestick holder. It's a very enjoyable therapeutic process and we all really loved it. So we learned a lot along this process. Our first few looked so bad, we just threw the wax back into the melting pot. But by the end, myself, my husband, and all my kids were making some beautiful candles. So I'm gonna give you some tips. Now, tip one, unless you have a ton of beeswax, and can fill up a large container so you get a long tapered candle, it's best to find a tall, narrow container. Now we opted, opted to use a tall, narrow thermos that we didn't want anymore. I wish I would have looked at the thrift store for an even taller thermos. We started thinking we would just use small pint-sized canning jars, but quickly realized that only made very tiny candles. I'm definitely gonna be keeping my out for even more tall, narrow thermoses or glass containers so that I can try my hands at making bigger ones another time. But we thought the metal thermos was perfect because it kept the wax hot so it didn't start to cool and clump on the outside like we noticed would happen more so in the glass jars. Tip two for you, you know, you'll be tempted to clip off the metal nut before the candle's done. We found we needed to keep it on until the very end. The extra weight made for a much more even dip and then it didn't flow in the water when you were dipping it into the cold water jar. Now tip three, as you go along, there will form like a protruding drop of wax at the bottom of the candle. 
Now we found we needed to keep that snipped so the candle would dip down evenly throughout the whole process and cover the entire amount of the string each time, making it like more evenly distributed throughout the candle. Tip number four, if you have extra wax, you can put a string or a wick in the bottom of a jar and make a candle in a jar. My husband made a couple of those in little half pint jars, but then he dumped the remaining wax into bigger jars to store until we are ready to do this next time or we get more beeswax, because I definitely think there's gonna be a next time. Now this was an extremely enjoyable activity for the family and I would even enjoy doing this myself sometime. So we finish up the night in our pajamas watching The Christmas Candle on Amazon Prime. I really couldn't have asked for a sweeter night as a family. In the meantime, I've been decorating for Christmas and winter by just adding these candles here and there and <laughs> everywhere. I hope you'll enjoy this candle making DIY sometime too. Just don't get hung up on having the perfect supplies before you start. Just gather what you can, have fun, and then join me as I constantly keep an eye out for more supplies to make even bigger and better taper, tapered candles again sometime. Now I'd love to have you take a minute to cruise my channel and blog tidbits and see if I have more fun DIY projects that you might be interested in. And be sure to hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Thanks for watching and be sure to come back for more inspiration for do-it-yourself living.